there's Simon from simonwoods.com there. Hello my sweets. I call you my sweets because today I've got five sweet wines. And that's five is quite a lot to get through in a ten minute slot, so let's get into them straight away. First one I've got. Well the first two I've got are actually from the Domaine Tarique, uh in the uh, Gascony region of southwest France. Uh, these two uh, are called Les Derniers Grives. Uh, the Last Thrushes and Les Premier Grieve, that's what I'm on now. And the idea is that uh, the, the thrushes come into the vineyard, um, they pick the first one, the Premier Grieve, when the first lot come in, and they pick the, um, uh, the, the final one when the last lot have gone. So, so, what was it that attracted the thrushes to this wine? Well, it certainly smells very attractive. It's got um, a slightly pear, uh, peach edge, each peach pear plum, it sounds like this is going to turn into, but let's taste it. Oh, that's really nice. Just off dry. Not um, out and out sweet. The sort of wine that if it, it's December here, so I'm not going to uh, go out and drink this in the garden, but um, that's what I call really nice summer day wine. On a day like this, well, maybe. You don't want to go outside, but you have to, if you're looking for something to have with uh, fresh fruit salad, it's got uh, a freshness, it's got a zip, it's got acidity to it, and um, yeah, not really complex, but tasty. Second wine from them. Um, it's a much taller, heavier bottle, so a bit more ambition obviously going on here. Uh, Les Derniers Grieve. And uh, the two grapes here, I think the first one was mainly Gros Monseng and the second one Petit Monseng. Uh, if you don't know those grape varieties, well, look out for an appellation called Gironson because they use those two and they use another one, I think it's Corbu, um, to make some fabulous dry, dry, very dry to very sweet wines and everything in between. Uh, they age fabulously. Um, they've always, like these two, uh, well, hopefully this has got a bit of acidity, but like... Um, uh, Gironson has got this acidity that keeps it fresh, keeps it um, uh, attractive and young and um, almost like a universal elixir of life. Let's see if we've got that universal elixir in the glass. Well, it smells just like I want it to do. It's got a hint of honey, it's got fennel, um, it's got citrus fruit, it's got oranges in particular. Mm. And whereas the, the first one is, yeah, very much um, summer day wine, this for me is very much food wine. What do you have with something like that? It's got loads and loads of acidity. It means it's going to go on, on and on and uh, for years. Wines like this last for 10 years or more, no problem. Uh, but you need some food with it. So um, if you think about something that maybe not, not necessarily out and out sweet, if you are going to have something sweet with this, I think about the flavours you've got there. Apple, fennel, citrus. Something like a tart tatin would be very nice with that. But it would be re equally nice with, um, with blue cheeses. Yeah. I like that a lot. Mm. But yeah, keep an eye out for Gironçon unsung appellation of France. Next one, we're in Chile. Um, Conchi Toro, late harvest Sauvignon Blanc from the Mali Valley. 2006 vintage. And this, uh, I don't know if you can, you can smell acidity, but you, uh, this for me smells like it's going to be quite a bit um, less fresh. Uh, it's going to be richer, uh, it's going to come across as rounder and fuller, but maybe not with that aristocratic backbone that I, I want in wines. Yeah, just as I expect. Um, the Sauvignon is giving a little bit of um, that citrus and gooseberry, but um, because of the sweetness, I want... I want something to, to fight against that sweetness, to, um, to do the yin and yang thing. And I, I miss the acidity that, uh, that I want to, to fight there. I'm getting things like lime marmalade, yeah, lemon and lime, a bit of orange marmalade there. But ultimately, just a bit on the gloopy side. Um, next two are muscats. Um, and Muscat is a great wine as you approach Christmas because it's one of the most Christmas pudding friendly 
great varieties there is. This first one, Torres in Spain, uh, Moscatel Doro. Yes, it's that grapey barley sugar edge that I get here. Let's have a taste. Almost a bit too much of that barley sugar edge there. There's, um, there's the sweetness, but again, as in with the Conchi Toro, there's nothing to, um, to fight against it, to, 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 to balance it out. And you're left, your mouth's left just a bit sweet, um, thinking, I want to have a drink of water now, rather than I want to have um, another sip of that. Um, probably in its place, maybe with sticky toffee pudding, it would come into its own, but... I, 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 again, I, I think I, I want a bit something with a bit more acidity. Final wine, uh, Campbell's Rutherglen Muscat. Um, Rutherglen, if you don't know it, Rutherglen's a, a bit in the state of Victoria, in bottom right-hand corner of Australia, and Rutherglen is right up against the border with New South Wales. It's warm, and um, it's uh, the Muscat grapes have been grown there for a long, long time. If you're lucky enough to go there and uh, go into some of the cellars, they've got Muscat from the 19th century still there, and trying to get it out of the barrel. It's almost like trying to get last drops of ketchup out of a bottle. And compared with the one before, this has got, um, it's a richer, fuller flavour. It, this has been fortified, so, but um, it's also been aged once it's been fortified, so the spirit is uh, nicely integrated. You don't smell anything um, burning burning your throat or anything like that. And whereas the, the, the muscat from, uh, from Torres had that barley sugar edge, here it's more treacle toffee. It's, yeah, it's, it's a more grown-up sweetness. Well, that's really sexy. Um, that for me is Christmas pudding wine. And if you don't like Christmas pudding, have that instead of a Christmas pudding. And if you don't like Christmas pudding and you're not having anything like that, just get some ice cream, pour that on top and have a glass on the side. That's, it's, it's got that um, ripe, juicy, alcoholic raisin edge. Like rum and raisin ice cream. Very tasty wine. Uh, they do, this is their, their simplest uh, wine, they do do ones that have got even more age, that go into more treacly and um, in more intense and of course more expensive, but um, this for me is absolutely smashing and um, it also ages well, so I'm a few weeks before Christmas here, so I might hang on to this and uh, have some of the Christmas put on the 25th. See you soon.